with baked full metal jacket potatoes. Pray Charles. They say, if the gun's worth doing, it's worth doing yourself. Which is okay, until you need brain surgery. So when my roof sprang the leak, I got the builders in. Bad move. They were talking cowboys. I knew they were bad when he turned up and said, we're here to fix the roof. Where is it? That's why the six teams employed to fight for a place in our series semi-finals know exactly what they're doing. Plus, they don't have builders' bums. At least I hope they don't. Let's find out who are tonight's professionals. We have newcomers Craig, Disco Inferno and Major Tom against the number 25 seed Shadow of Napalm. And in the first of our battles, the number 9 seed 101 against two robots we've seen before, Dominator 2 and Henry II. Over to you, Jules. We have got some awesome looking robots for this battle. Here we have the Henry II team from Woodbridge in Suffolk. They've got a hydraulic lifting ram here, which is going to be pretty exciting. Bits of a Robin Reliant in there. And Granny, of course, who apparently was tipping the scales earlier for their robot. Hardly. Then we have Dominator 2. This sexy beast is made of plasma nitride coated titanium. Whew. And what powers your axe there? It's a high power pneumatic ram. Excellent. Good luck to you, team. The 101 guys, father and daughter team. There's Amy, how are you? Okay, thank you. Good. Are you excited? Yes. Yes, come on. Now, these tracks come from a milk bottle washing machine, which is extraordinary. And there's going to be aircraft-grade aluminium all over the top here. It's going to be quite a fight, I think. I'm the battle starter. Twisted battle starter. Let the wars begin! <laughs> Woodbridge in Suffolk, Henry II. Back with their petrol-driven machine and its hydraulic ram. Some of the parts come from a three-wheeled car, which is to run at its switch speedway track. Can that be right? Grandma's picture on the front for luck again. And let's see how Granny and Co got on last time against Stegosaurus. Roasted. Slammed. Brutally pinched, too, by Sergeant Bash. And then, just for luck, sliced by dead metal. These are my children, Melanie and Leon. This is the robot. The, this time, the war, in the wars, we've got a lifting arm, which will probably lift the car up. We've also got a secret weapon from last year, which is Mel. Um, my nan on the front, it used to be on the back last time, and um, she's going to get her revenge this war. From Huntington, Dominator 2. With 20 mile an hour speeds, this could dominate the arena powered by two industrial motors, a plasma nitride coated titanium shell for protection and pneumatic axe. Today they plan to dominate robot wars. Last time around, they were first to go in the pinball. Showed good control steering and looked menacing. But how flimsy was that outer shell when under pressure from the robots? The house robots, that is. And all that style and control meant nothing under attack like this. They'll have to be stronger this time around. Hello, my name's Peter Halloway, and I'd like to introduce this war, Dominator 2. And here it's got a titanium-coated shell, two one-horsepower motors, a pneumatic axe with an acceleration linkage, which will bring this whole lot down at about a ton and a half of pressure. Also with us, Paul Tolliday. Oh. And Chris Hall. Hi. From Kettering, seed number nine, 101. Beaten in the semi finals of the last wars, 101 returns with a special Roboteers EPS extra perceptive sentry system, which fires a spike weapon travelling at 200 miles an hour. In the last wars, the closest battle I think we've ever had against Hypnodisc. Bash for smash. Crash for mash, the judges had to come in and decide, leaving the father and daughter team of 101 broken hearted. Hi, I'm Mike. This is Amy. This is 101. Back to fight another war. Runs on stainless steel tracks, either way up. Two powerful motors at the back and a very powerful weapon in the middle, which fires automatically when it comes into range with another robot. Roboteers, stand by.
Dominator 2, the pneumatic axe controlled by Paul Tolliday with the moustache there on the left-hand side, Chris Hall and Peter Holloway with him. 101 with the father and daughter team, Mike and Amy Franklin. And Henry 2 with Tom Moy, a blacksmith, and his kids, 11-year-old Leon and 13-year-old Melanie. on the left, making the first move. Oh, look at that, a slam immediately from the axe down on Henry II, which is a petrol-driven robot, don't forget. And I think the drive motors are there or thereabouts. The axe has gone in, and, and I think that's destroyed Henry II's chances straight away. Look, immobilised, what an attack from Dominator II. That pneumatic axe crushing down. Now, one-on-one -on -one back on the attack. There goes the axe again. One-on-one -on -one has to stay out of trouble now from the Dominator 2 team. They all work together. Peter Halloway, Chris Hall and Paul Tolliday. Poor old Henry 2 out of it immediately, I would suggest. Dominator 2 with a strange double B shape. Trying to cause problems on 101 as well. Denting but not penetrating. 101 comes back onto the attack with those tracks from the milk bottle washing machine. Can they deliver, I wonder? Killalot comes in with that fearsome hydraulic cutting floor twice as powerful as the jaws of light used by rescue services to save trapped victims from wreckage. Immensely powerful. Poor old Henry II. They've worked so hard on the improvements. Shunt a little push. That's why you can see the wheels moving, I'm sure, nothing else. There's no life in that machine now. Meanwhile, Amy and Mike will survive with 101. In goes Henry II. Into the pit. Seed gets taught a lesson from the newcomer. 101 and Dominator 2 go through. Henry 2. Oh, did you have fun? Yeah, that was good. I think you've got your daddy to blame because I found out that he built a full size working man trap. We would have thought you'd seen the pit coming. Well, uh, that's the right girl. We got terminated. He got us. Simple as that. We'll be back next year. You've been good sports. See you next wars. Oh. <laughs> Boo hoo for Henry II. <laughs> 101 and Dominator 2 through. Next up, Disco Inferno Major Tom and Shadow of Napalm in the pits. In the pits, we have some ferocious and some hilarious looking robots. This is Shadow of Napalm. Old favourites back from Dartford with uh, apparently repairs more than improvements, so we shall see how that fares for them later. Disco Inferno from York University. This flywheel rotates at 750 revs per minute, which is uh, incredibly fast. Two six inch blades here, powered by three Bosch 750 motors. Ouch. Major Tom, certainly getting into the spirit of Robot Wars, making some last minute adjustments here. <laughs> This beautiful head is a bubblegum dispenser, is it not? Right. Or an ex-bubblegum dispenser. And what's your, your chassis made of? Uh, a garden water butt. Excellent. What's your message for the viewers at home? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'll need it. <laughs> strut its funky stuff upside down. The hypnodisc style blades will give plenty of Saturday night fever, but beware, Matilda wants the slow dance at the end. Hello, we are Oliver, Mark and Nick, and this is our robot Disco Inferno. It's powered by two 750 watt motors which drive the drive wheels through two motorcycle chain sets. It's armed with polycarbonate on all sides and runs either way up. Our weapon is this inch thick solid aluminium flywheel which weighs about 15 kilograms and spins at 700 RPM. From Dartford, seed number 25, Shadow of Napalm. Robot Wars veterans from the Dartford Girls Grammar, but with hopes that this will be no mere shadow of Napalm, a large spike, a lifting mechanism, Kevlar shell, titanium, it's all there, but shadows can evaporate under the spotlight. And last time around, they'd only made repairs, not improvements, and Stegosaurus took advantage. A crushing defeat. Napalm looked fragile. Lacking in manoeuvrability for David Crosby at the controls. He knows he'll have to do better this time around with Shadow of Napalm. Hello, oh, we're Shadow of Napalm. This is Vicky I'm playing today. We've been down to Dartford Girls Grammar School. This is the machine itself, Shadow of Napalm. It's got a linear actuator at the front which drives with lifting arm. We have 24 volt 
driving wheelchair motors which propel the vehicle backwards and forward. It's got front lift guard, it's got back pointy sticky things out, and it's even got shower fittings. From the Isle of Sheppey in Kent, Major Tom. Ground control for Major Tom from two golf caddy motors, as well as the garden barrel, old bicycles and lawn mowers also used. The ramp weapon, Captain Cosmic's head atop. My name's Henry Ryan, and this is the rest of our team. Gerald Morris, Arthur Robinson, and we're the Major Tom team. And this is our robot, which is powered by two golf buggy motors. And the main weapon is also powered by a golf buggy motor, and it's a lifting ram capable of lifting 12 stones. Roboteers, stand by. Disco Inferno from York University, two graduates in computer science, and a psychology graduate. Major Tom from the Isle of Sheppey, Captain Henry Ryan has his three daughters in the audience. And Shadow of Napalm, teacher David Crosby, Claire Greenway and Victoria Allgood, they've sort of grown up with Robot Wars. Three, two, one. Shadow of Napalm on the left-hand side, we want to do better than last time around, very disappointed, but look at that hypno style blade on Disco Inferno, they've certainly Learnt from the last wars, Major Tom trundles with the Union Jack proud. A loop to the other robots, it would seem. There's the weapon again of Disco Inferno spinning viciously as he comes in on the attack on Shadow of Napalm. Shadow of Napalm has the lifting mechanism on that large spike. Major Tom, bottom of your picture, has its own lifting ramp as well. Bumping and buffeting and damage caused. Disco Inferno spins to come back on the attack. That's the uh, Shadow of Napalm team from the control booth. Major Tom's lifting ramp seems to be stuck in place. And there's Disco Inferno wedged in on Shadow of Napalm. Locked tight in battle. Well, for whom will it be a dance of death in Robot Wars in the Eliminator? A bit pedestrian now. Disco Inferno. I thought the boys from York University would be formidable, but... There doesn't seem to be a lot of light from those three 750-watt motors. I think they're immobilized. They're on the arena floor. Flipper any moment now. It's all over for Disco Inferno. And when the lights come down at the end of the disco, you know who's waiting. Yes. Matilda for a snog. As the lights go out for Disco Inferno, it's on to round two for Shadow of Napalm and Major Tom. Poor old Disco Inferno, out, Shadow of Napalm and Major Tom go through from the second of our Eliminators. Let's see how they line up next, then the two seeds kept apart, one and one against Major Tom and Shadow of Napalm seeded 25 against Dominator 2. Absolutely gutting, really. Yeah. What happened? Um, well, if you can see that black wire that runs to our aerial, uh, it's just got rather cunningly caught behind our receiver switch. And um, when we hit the other robot, it just pushed it forward and turned all our electronics off. So you had absolutely no power, nothing no, you could do? No power, couldn't move at all. I think that is the worst thing that can happen on Robot Wars. Just about, yeah. And you haven't you even really got any war wounds, do you no. wounds to tell your mates about? No, we haven't got any damage at all to the robot, it's just been turned off. It's absolutely gutting. Yeah, gutting. I really wanted to see more of that sword and some serious damage. Now most pinballs have buzzers and bells, but in our pinball warrior tournament, the buzzings from chainsaws and the bells well, that's the clanging of robots beating the scrap out of each other. Hey, let the trials begin! As you know, Craig, the Pinball Warrior Tournament is test of driving skills, how you control the speed, direction, to attack the barrels, five points for each scored there. If you pop the silver sphere into the highlighted pit, that's another 25 points. Up and over the bridge with a completed run, 20 points, and that takes you to the next set of obstacles. The multi-ball option, if you release the balls, 10 points. For each ball into the pit, another 5 points. Open the car doors, 25 points. Specific targets littered around the arena floor as well, all guarded by house robots. Their bash on the 50-point target. Matilda on another 50-point target. The big one, 75 points, but dead metal's in the way. And Killalot has the freedom of the arena, let me tell you. Hypnotist, the leader so far, 135 points, splendid run, Spikosaurus 40, that would be disappointing, 12 robots still to come. Here's the first of them. Braves in Essex and seeded number 10, Swarm of Scutter. 
Series 3. A Scutter's Revenge knocked out in the semi-finals by 101. Darren Moore, Graham Warner and Luke Jackman. Robotiers, stand by. Get up to 15 miles an hour with Spawn of Scutter. Three, two, one. Two starter motors from a, a car. Really thrust Spawn at the barrels. Tumbling barrels all over the place. And 50 points. This is a great run so far. There's the old mascot tossed away from the top of Spawn of Scutter. Darren Ball at the controls. Graham Warner and Luke Chapman up there as well. Trying to get the door release. Or are they taking on another target? But uh, Death Metal's in the way and Killlot has the freedom of the arena. Go on, get in there now, get in there now. Very good run here from Spawn of Scutter. 75 points lights up. Now the spear. Can they get that into the pit, I wonder? The multi-ball release. This is splendid stuff from Spawn of Scutter. Here in a litter, there's another 50 point scored! This is a terrific run, surely the best so far, but where to now, lads? Take on the other barrels! Send them crashing! Get that spear into the big illuminated pit, and that's the icing on the cake, but this is already a tremendous run. Now get out of trouble, get out of trouble, stay away from kill a lot. And watch the points light up that leaderboard! <laughs> terrific run! Aggression straight away, power and pace, the barrels tumble. Bit of a lucky break, took them in on the 50-point target, 75 points, notched up. Then the multi-ball release went down. Still plenty of time to attack the 50-point target. And the final barrels. Very good stuff. Oh, look at that, 245 points. They have slaughtered the rest of the robots that have gone so far, but still so many good machines to come. That is one heck of a score, though, by Sport of Scutter. You know, I'm sure I saw them tilting the arena. Let's get back to the wars. <laughs> this is how they line up, Craig. Shadow of Napalm against Dominator 2, and the number 9 seeds 101 against Major Tom. Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me? You're about to go on. You've got yes, your crowns on. Yes, Will yeah. you be the reigning champions? Well, we hope so. We all live in hope and prove that uh, for a hundred pound we can make a robot. Exactly. Which I think is very important to show that it can be done. Exactly. Amy, scary? Yes. Yeah? Now, you have got a censored spike at the front, so tell me how that works. Uh, well, basically, there's a sensor underneath the robot which uh, looks for any object within six inches. As soon as it sees an object within six inches, bang, it fires a spike, in theory, but in practice, it's very uh, fickle. Is it working? Mm, pass. Mm. We'll find out in a minute. So you're going to rely on good luck? You've brought your mascot here, Amy and the Bunny. Excellent. Thank you. Roboteers, stand by. Major Tom from the Isle of Sheppey, with a ramp at the front. <laughs> exactly. And 101, with that spike. Formidable for Mike and Amy Franklin. And the rabbit. Three, two, one. Activate. Run, rabbit, run, run, run. 101. Major Tom has a big gun, gun, gun. Can he use the power of those two golf caddy motors to drive onto 101, which seems a speedier robot by far, to be honest. In the middle of the washing machine tracks on the side of Major Tom. Don't forget, Mike has the experience as well. Mike Franklin, an engineer. Slamming Major Tom against the arena wall. That's the ref bot coming out to have a closer look. And Major Tom in trouble now against the arena wall. There's Captain Cosmic's head wobbling. And their whole future in Robot Wars. A bit of a wobble too. There's Matilda with the great chainsaw to hack into Major Tom's shell. And don't forget it's a garden water barrel. That shell, oh! And there goes the head. Lead the way. Oh! And all around you are losing the head. Can you keep yours? No. No, no, no. Out of the arena. Oh! The ground is here. There comes the bubblegum machine there. Uh, they're forever blowing bubbles down the Isle of Sheppey way. Fortune's fading for them though fast. Shunt is there, so too dead metal. Probably a bit of shunt with the axe. Well, you wouldn't hold too much rainwater in that garden barrel now, would you? Not really. In the pit it goes, I should think, Major Tom. There's something wrong. Your circuits have gone. 
And here are you, floating around. Not your tin can. A flip on the arena floor. Major Tom, there's Matilda, tusks along. The pit descends. And Major Tom, your circuits are certainly dead now. There we can see the camera on Killalot. Major Tom has gone. Well, ground control to Major Tom. Goodness me, it's all gone wrong. The winner is 101. <laughs> What happened there? Oh, it was a really good time. We had a lovely time. Really yeah. Good, yeah. Just didn't quite sort of get him into gear, did we? Yeah. Wind did. You got totally battered, didn't yeah, we you? Got, wind did. Won us very early in the match. Run out of power and then... The, yes, the, that was it. The house robots came in for a mercy killing, yeah, really. That's right, yeah. yeah. Have you had a good time? Smashing. Will you come back and see us again? Definitely. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Nice to have you, lads. Amy! You're back! You were lucky to get through the melee, weren't you? There was no problems there, were there? Yeah. And, we got, we and got you, lucky. you got lucky in the melee, but you certainly weren't lucky there. Well, we're lucky they packed in, but I think, you know, we've probably got quite a strong robot. Yeah, you are. I mean, the, the motor seems really... Because you do seem to hit the robots very, quite very hard, hard don't yeah, you? Yeah, well, the weapon's not working, though, so uh, there was a problem with it. When yeah. we tried to power it up, it uh, it was a mad sort of big gas leak. So. Do you think you'll be able to get it fixed for the next round? Hopefully. I'll well, see it work. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're seated number nine, so you're in with a good chance. I mean, a lot of people are giving you a lot of respect. You went yeah, very far last year. Fingers crossed. Ladies and gentlemen, here for 101. RESPECT, respect. Major Tom go out. Shadow of Napalm against Dominator 2. Looks frightening. Dominator 2 with that great axe. It's going to be smashing. But that's what Major Tom said last time around. And look what happened to them. Matilda. 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 She totally decapitated you, didn't she? Showing me age. She let's certainly have, did. Let's have a look at the remnants. Oh, look. Oh, dear. That was the bubblegum oh, dispenser. Oh, <laughs> but you've got the face. So you can oh, be back yeah. next we, year. We'll be back, we'll we'll be back next year. <laughs> Somebody's going to be using a little bubblegum. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I reckon they certainly will on the other Sheppy. <gasps> anyway. Yeah. No, we've had a great time. We really have. I never thought we'd get this far, even. Exactly. So it's been wonderful. It really I'm has. just weird gets you through the yeah, first round. It certainly round, does, but yes. We'll, 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 we'll spend £200 next year. <laughs> yes. Well done, T. Are you pleased? Thank you. Yes, very. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got any uh, changes to make for the next round? You get the weapon working. The weapon packed in as soon as we put it in the arena. So. Oh, no, did it? Yeah. For the sense so of what the working... Just give them a good ram and a... Put... No, one of the valves broke and all the gas leaked out, so... Does it rely on the sensor? Uh. It won't come out until the sensor. No, it won't pop come out until the sensor is it. No, it, it, until the sensor, is it? I, I can disarm it, but it, it just wasn't working, so... The sensor's okay, it's just the gas. Yeah. We need to sort that the out. Gas problem. Okay, well, you haven't got long. You're through to the heat final. Go work like crazy. Yep. Come on, Amy, you lead the way. The Dominator 2 team are about to go into the arena. Are you feeling confident, guys? Very yeah. confident. Yeah. Oh, you've got the fastest robot in the heat, yes. that's for sure. You raced it against your motorbike, didn't yes, you? Yes, so I've got a ZX9 that's race tuned, and we've done a drag race down the car park, and the uh, robot out accelerated me. Yes! Uh, so what speed are we talking about? About 20 miles an hour top speed, but it gets but there very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> that's oh, yes. what you need in this game. Absolutely. <laughs> Cutting out the tension back here. Yeah, definitely. Oh, now they've got a dirty looking axe. They have, but we've got a flipper. You've got a flipper. Yeah. And, um, you've got a, is that a Kevlar shell? Yeah. With some aluminium. Some aluminium. Yeah. And titanium. Yeah. How's it going to hold up against the axe? Be fine. Be fine. Yeah. yeah. That's confident. Fingers crossed for you, ladies. I think everyone in the Robot Wars Arena crowd would love to see the Dartford girls do well. The question is, their machine, Shadow of Napalm, is it strong enough to withstand the axe of Dominator 2? There it is. Looks mighty powerful to me. At the controls, Paul Tolliday, controller of the weapon. We could be seeing another seed go out here. I fear a shadow of day bomb from that axe. The pneumatic powered axe driving in and already piercing the shell of Shadow of Napalm. It's a Kevlar shell, aluminium decking and titanium, but 
can it withstand this sort of punishing? Oh, damage again. Fair green win, Victoria all good. Back again with Shadow of Napalm. Their teen life has been spent in Robot Wars. Dreaming of destruction and so on with their teacher David Crosby, teacher of design and technology. And there the two just crumbling together. Here comes the ref bot with the camera to have a closer look. Now Dominator 2 pushing forward. Shadow of Napalm holding its ground. Killing off there. Good controls here by David Crosby digging in because he knows he's certainly outpowered us in terms of weaponry. But in goes the great pincer arm of Killalot. It's grass. Shadow of Napalm, they've done very well to get away there. David Crosby, that's superb stuff to get out. But Dominator 2 senses victory. Can Shadow of Napalm pull this around now? The axe crashes down once, twice, into the very belly of Shadow of Napalm. No, a shake of the head. He fears the worst here. He thinks they're dead. Down goes the pit. Kill a lot on the edge of the pit. A lot going in there. A lot. And David Crosby with the girls shouting loudly. Steer them away from the pit. Dominator 2 comes in with a, a shove. Right on the edge of the pit here. Shadow of Napalm, the number 25 seeds. The hopes teetering and tottering. They're digging in there. This is superb back to the wall stop. And trying just to last the distance here in this semi-final. And finally Matilda gives them a shove and yet they won't go down. A brave badly performance and finally they're in the pit. And it all comes to naught. They did so hard to stay in there so long. Everyone was against them. Well done to you lot for staying in there. The smell of napalm in the morning smells like victory, but the victory goes to Dominator 2! Well, you called your robot Shadow of Napalm, yep. and you must admit that was a shadow of uh, previous performances, really. What went wrong? Well, I don't know, it became from a shadow, it became trash. Um, She's a bad robot, and Claire should have been driving. Claire, I mean, you, you, you went so far last time, I and mean, this time you've just kind of fallen at the first hurdle. I mean, I why is it a bad robot? I mean, what, what, aren't you supposed to improve the robot? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've come back, and it's definitely a wreck of napalm now. It's not a shadow anymore. <laughs> Are you going to come back again and try again? Yeah, I think so. Have you enjoyed yourselves? Yeah, it's been a lot, yeah. Yeah, nice to see you again. Dominator 2, not bad, not bad, come hey. on! That, that axe is it's fairly mean, isn't it? It's awesome, isn't it? They kind of turned that into a tea bag. <laughs> 2,000 perforations in every robot. What was your game plan? Because, I mean, it, 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 it didn't really seem as though it was a hard fight for you. Basically, ram it, hit it, and push it as much as we possibly could. Metal mayhem. Absolutely. Total carnage. Yeah. Let's hear it for Dominator 2! <laughs> method, ram it, hit it and push it, takes Dominator 2 through against Shadow of Napalm. And in the Heat E final, it'll be up against the seeded 101, who will have their weapon working properly. Dominator 2 has that formidable axe. Dominator 2! That was an awesome victory. I'm actually quite scared to be this close to your robot after watching that. <laughs> How is your plasma nitride coated titanium holding up? Well, we've scratched well, the paint. Well. So, uh, we are a bit upset with some paint off it now. Oh. Yeah. Which... Oh, poor you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it means we're lighter now. That's the problem, so... Oh, <laughs> some more weapons Oh, on. yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and the axe is holding up well? Oh, wonderfully, yeah. yes. Very strong start there. Straight in, using the axe. Oh, yeah. No mercy. No mercy. Off you go. Get ready for the heat final. Thank you very Chill much. Boy. Thank you. While our survivors psych themselves for the next round, let's enjoy a quick game. And it starts with a warning to all smaller robots. If you've seen more meat on Kate Moss's toothpick, then don't dare enter our sumo basho. Let the trials begin! You have to be weighty and powerful to stay in the sumo basho arena as long as possible against Shunt Onslaught Manage 17.31 seconds. Make a mistake, you've gone in a trice. Look at Diotor down the bottom. From Southampton. 
Maverick. Father and son team, young Francis wants to join the Navy to become a pilot. Dad, Kevin, loves to watch Southampton play football. There's the robot. Maverick, 79.8 kilos in weight. That's a pneumatically powered front flipper. Roboteers, stand by. Has to stay in the arena against Shunt. Three, two, one. Powered from two Activate. wheelchair motors. Maverick against Shunt. Gently maneuvering its way to the left-hand side. Really staying in there. Eight seconds and more, but goes now. Had no answer when Shunt finally pressed out on the accelerator and came forward on the attack. Gruesome grin on the features of Maverick. But the last laugh was with Shunt. From Hereford and seeded number 22, Exterminator. Three man team, Marlon Pritchard, Paul Lewis, and Simon Baldwin. Exterminator, 80.1 kilos, an aluminium shell. That if we'll see the axe weapon. The scoop bucket at the front, though, Roboteers, stand by. could be advantageous here Three, to get in underneath Shunt when Shunt two, comes forward. One. Activate. Slamming against Shunt, immediately on the attack. You can see there the little scoop right underneath Shunt, pushing it back and wedging itself down on Shunt. This is a great tactic. This is a fine run here by Exterminator, and they used the weapon on the front, the little scoop, to get in underneath Shunt. Shunt can gain no momentum. Look at the wheel spinning. This is a brilliant run. This is the best we've had so far. Terrific stuff, the Sumo Basho belongs to Exterminator from Hereford so far. Shunt cannot manoeuvre, Shunt cannot come forward. Look at this, up around half a minute already, this is fantastic stuff. Sumo Basho Exterminator. X-rated stuff for the house robot, it can't do anything. They pin Shunt down, it can't do anything, look at this. This is what we've waited for, and I've got Heave-Ho get Shunt out of that Basho arena. Push and shove, Heave-Ho, Heave-Ho. Push and push and push. Tremendous stuff. They're going to last in there. They're going to outlast the house robot. Brilliant stuff from the boys from Hereford. Exterminator. That's the best so far. What a performance that was. Straight on the attack. Great tactics. The full minute survived. The only way Exterminator can now be beaten is if one of the six remaining contestants push Shunt out of the arena within the minute. And there's some good robots to come there. Razor amongst them, Pussycat too. More from our Sumo Supremos next time. But right now, it's back to the wars. This is the Heat E final. 101 against Dominator 2. The power of 101. The axe of the Dominator. This is how they got to the heat final. They met, of course, in the first eliminator and conspired to defeat Henry II. You already see the power of 101 and the axe of Dominator II. There, look at that great push from 101, and that was the end of Henry II. 101 next to Con Major Tom. The major concern of 101 is whether or not the weapon is working. It's not, but it's still powered by those two industrial motors. Has enough, as Major Tom completely lost his head. Matilda, the coup de grace. Major Tom up in smoke. And then Dominator 2 against the seated shadow of Napalm. Have more penetration. That formidable axe. Shadow of Napalm dug in. A bit hard on the arena floor. But there was only one way that was going to end. The 101 team about to go into the arena for the final. Scary, isn't it? I'm terrified. And what you're up against is not pretty, is it? Yeah. Let's go and find Dad, Mr. Franklin, and Amy here. Realistically, what can you do at a time like this? Hope. <laughs> Pray. Pray. All the usual things. Adopt yeah. a new religion. Perhaps. Adopt a new religion. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Look at it for one last time. Yeah, it's looking good now. It's looking Who good now. Five minutes like. time. They're I have a, a few more holes. Competitor, it is, they? yeah, it's very good, yeah. But so they're titanium, plasma nitride coated titanium. I mean, that's just showing off, isn't it? It's just showing off, yeah. But uh, you could be there with your milk bottle washer tracks. I mean, it could happen. Let's hope so. Finals is a big deal. 
If you get through, it's brilliant, and if you don't, your mum will be happy, won't she? Because of all the mess you've been causing to her, I hear. She's not pleased, is she? No. But she's going to be incredibly proud of you that you're even here. So let's see what happens next, and maybe she'll be even more proud, OK? Let's Good luck, team. The Dominator 2 team, uh, still trying to figure out the controls by the look of it. No. <laughs> Can you help us? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, it appears to be working. <laughs> looking good. You're about to go into the arena. We Let are? me just tell you now, if you're hard on Amy, you'll have her mum to contend with. Oh, no. What do we do, then? <laughs> well, I don't know. Just make it look good, but don't do too much damage. <laughs> OK. Just win gracefully, boys. <laughs> I, I shouldn't say that. It's a bit biased, isn't it? Two robots crying over spilt milk. Two more in desperate need of a bitter bottle as they fight for a place in our series semi-finals. It's the third and final round. <laughs> From Huntington, Dominator 2, from Kettering, seed number 9, 101. Seeds, who didn't sound too confident. Dominator 2, is there a problem with the controls? Chris Hall, who designed the power electronics, will have to sort them out. The Dominator 2. There they are, Peter Halloway, the team captain at the controls. He drives the engine, 101. With Dad Mike, daughter Amy, she wants to be a surgeon when she's older. Three. Two, one, Amy, if you want to get used to slicing dice as a surgeon, let's get used to slicing out Dominator 2 right now. Look at that great speck of an axe. Oh, on the top there at 101 already. Causing damage. Is it punctured 101's aircraft grade aluminium shell? I think it has, and I think it's holding on, and 101 dragging it around the arena floor. Now, that's interesting. Mike Franklin may well be able to use that tactic again. Draw Dominator 2 on, get the axe caught on top of the shell, drag it towards a bit. 101 showing good aggression, and taking Dominator 2 almost into a CPZ, the corner patrol zone, and Matilda can come out from there and fly at Dominator 2. This is the good heat final we thought it would be. And 101 certainly showing great tenacity and verb. Don't forget they survived the Eliminator phase last time around and reached the semi-finals. Only his hypno just stopped them, 101. Dominator 2, madly flailing away with that axe. Do not try this at home, children, with a toothpick on your brother's favourite model car. Wait until Christmas Day and do it then. 101 into the CPZ. Matilda there as well, pushing 101 out. Go on, Amy. Come up with some inspiration, you're going to need it. There, you see, now, it didn't puncture the shell of 101 on that occasion, but look at it. Look at the top. The poor salt out of that. Dragging 101 towards the arena. Oh, wall, and into the pitches of Dead Metal. That's a great tactic by Dominator 2. Just squeezing out of the grasp of Dead Metal 101. Back in towards the house robot again. You can see the mighty pincers there. 101's trapped, trundling away. On towards the arena floor flipper. Yeah, get away, get away, that's right, discussion the better part of Valor. Run away, run away, live to fight another day, 101. Turned over, I won't bother it. The track's turned over, but all the aggression so far from Dominator 2, should it go to the judges? Star control, damage and aggression, those are the things they're looking for. 101, a side attack now on Dominator 2, which means, of course, Dominator 2 can't get the axe into play. Now it can. 101 on the arena wall, is it pinned there? It is pinned there! It's in trouble here, 101! Pinned to the arena wall! Getting away now! Dead Metal has come in for the kill, I think! Dominator 2 on the attack with the axe! And Shunt, what's Shunt doing out there now to take on 101? What do you... Shunt is on the attack! That is not on Ref! Ref Bob gives Shunt a yellow card! Give him a red card and get him out of there! Poor old 101! Should not have been the victim of an attack by Shunt! I'll have a word with Shunt! No, I won't. I'm terrified of Shunt. But it goes to the judges! What? How close is that, by the way? What a good battle! Well, well, well. A very tight battle. We've got to go to our judges. Remember, this is for a place in the series semi-finals. The judges are looking at style, control, damage and aggression. Here they are, our boffins. Professor Noel Shark in the middle, Martin Smith, Dr. Myra Wilson. While they deliberate, let's have a look at the key moments. You see, there's the axe of Dominator 2 straight into the play. And the caught on the top of 101. 101 brave enough to come back onto the attack, but denied its own weapon. It hasn't worked throughout this heat. That could be key as the judges ponder. Dominator 2's axe bang once again. 
101 pushed across the arena floor into the CPZ, which again will count in Dominator's two's favour. 101 surviving, but it was a battle of survival for 101. And I think, in my mind, that edges it towards Dominator 2 just, but we'll see what the judges have to say. There they are, totting up the scores. Professor Noel Shark in the middle. Martin Smith there to his left. What's the decision? Well, the decision is unanimous, and the winners are Dominator 2! <laughs> now, if I remember rightly, last year you made the series semi-finals, didn't you? And you lost out then on a very close judge decision against our eventual runner-up in the final, Hypnodisc. Yeah. This time you haven't quite made it. But, um, not quite so close. Not quite so close no. as well. He did sort of penetrate you a lot more with the axe than, than Hypnotist did. Well, it's got a bit of ventilation now, hasn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, it looked like a Dalmatian now, 101 Dalmatians, shall we say. Um, are you not too upset this time, are you, Amy? No. no. You gave it a good run. I mean, you're a tenacious robot. You've got an awful lot of power. It takes but a lot of damage to, to actually stop it. Yeah, and, um, but you need yeah. a stronger weapon, that's well, right. I, I need a weapon that works. You so need a weapon that works. that works. Yeah. You're going to come back again, aren't you? We are. I mean, okay. I'd, ju I'd just like to say thank you to uh, all the people that helped in, in making it possible to get it back this year, oh, including Ken, Brian, Richard and Lee. Brilliant. So, and you know we always love to have you, and we always have to love to have you, Amy. We'll see you again. Thank you. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> come on! <laughs> You've got a place in the series semi-finals. Yes. That is quite a tough robot, that, but it doesn't seem to have a weapon that, you know, like yours. Well, no, but he, like you say, he's a very tenacious robot. He, uh, he just kept climbing up us, and we knew him for a tough time, so we just went for it. And um, how do you think you're going to progress then? Well, we've just got to go for it now, haven't we? Absolutely. Well, we'll see how you progress, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause, Dominator 2! Well, you can keep your chihuahuas and your cute Labradors, because we only have pit bulls on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. <laughs> Belsey and Paul Young join the Buzzcocks at 10 later on BBC2. And right now you can catch Steps, Blur and S-Pub 7 in Top of the Pops over on BBC1.